it's me, Vicky Marie. Oh, and I, I'm really glad that I started researching this video because I found out some things that were really, really interesting, I think, because I'm a person who likes details and finds uh, little things interesting. I um, hope you do too. Uh, hopefully, as you're watching this video, you like the way I present things. I like to go into the little, sometimes it's the little details that make something more interesting, isn't it? You know, you, you've got, because this, this particular video, I'm going to be talking about the coroner. You know, we're all waiting for the coroner's final uh, verdict. Uh, in June about the Nicola Bully case so it will be being investigated at the moment I have been it might even be finished now um, and but we won't know the results of everything until June and so as I was researching this I thought well what are research is or what are the po possible outcomes of this uh, coroner's inquest um, we know that a coroner cannot uh, do a criminal investigation so if by then it hasn't been passed to the police then there's no there's no evidence if you like or nothing that the coroner has found anyway to suggest that it is a criminal investigation and I wanted to look into then what would be uh, the other possible results and then in, in the course of my um, investigations, if you like, or my research, I found out that the actual, because the, the, the inquest is being undertaken by um, the, senior cor uh, the senior coroner for Lanks Lancashire and Blackburn with Darwin. And the guy who who is in who is the the senior coroner is James Adderley. And so then, the more I sort of researched into him a bit, he's a very interesting character because uh, he was uh, an ears, nose, and ENT surgeon, ears, nose, and throat surgeon. I think that's right. Uh, that was where he started his career, but he left medicine in 1993. Uh, and he then retrained or requalified. He became a lawyer. He trained to be a lawyer, and he's been the cor a coroner for nearly twenty years now. So he's an, you know he's had an interesting career, but more interesting than that, I think, is he's um, he's a bit of a TV star himself. So he's appeared on uh, a TV program, Cause of Death. is channel 5 a channel 5 program I don't know if you can get it on YouTube or you maybe can get it on your catch-up or whatever uh, talking about you know different cases and about his and I'm going, definitely going to look out for that because I think that'd be interesting for all sorts of reasons and he was telling some uh, you know stories he's been telling so he's not above a little bit of um, you know media attention himself so it just goes to show when people are saying oh you know this unhelpful speculate i mean he's i'm not saying he's speculating because he's not he's not talking about the nicola bully case at all but you know he's done things on the on on the tv and he's spoken to newspapers about things you know so it's a no what i'm trying to say is it's a normal thing you know even coroners on the TV or uh, speak to the newspapers. Have you ever thought about learning Spanish? Try my Break the Language Barrier series of books available on Amazon. There's levels one, two, five. So whatever level you are, whether you're a beginner or you're more advanced and you just want to practice what you've learned, there's a book for you. If you're not sure which level you are, get in touch with me and I will help you to decide which book is the best for you. Also, if you're interested in Zoom classes in Spanish, those can be arranged. I've got some timetable left. Now, these books, the explanations are in English, the answers are in the back, and each exercise you do in these books is backed up by a YouTube um, video to practice your pronunciation and listening. Okay, so they're available on Amazon, Vicky Riley, Vicky with an I, 
and all available on Amazon. Thank you. So yeah, it was interesting because he was talking about some of the cases that he's had and he said that the most difficult case was of a 52 year old woman who strangled herself when her top got caught in an oven. So that's an intriguing case isn't it? I'd like to hear about that case and poor woman and poor family and how do you establish that? You know, so it's quite interesting isn't it to see how these facts are established because if you, as I presume, you know, she was found Anyway, I can't go, you know, until I've actually read the story, I shouldn't, you know, I don't know how she was found or what the situation was. But it's interesting, isn't it? And because, um, you know, you think, oh, it wouldn't be very nice being a coroner because obviously you're dealing with difficult things. But he says it's good because it means he can help the families to find out what happened to their loved one. And yeah, I think that's true because, as I say many times, I think the worst thing has got to be not knowing what has happened to someone. And I've had an experience with a coroner when my ex-partner um, unfortunately deleted himself because he couldn't cope with the fact, you know, after quite a long stalking campaign where I was in fear of my life, um, which you can read about in my book or you could, there's a video on my members, on the, mem uh, the a members video. Thank you for watching my channel and if you are interested in knowing how I survived stalking, how I became a Spanish teacher and how I ended up living in Spain, uh, you can find it all out here in my book Confessions of a Spanish Teacher, available on Amazon. Um, yeah, all Amazon sites. Thank you. I talk about it in full. Um, very distressing obviously the whole the whole situation from start to finish and it ended tragically because he deleted himself and the coroner was in charge of that case and there was an inquest and I had to go and give evidence at the inquest it was in the local papers uh, you know so I do know what it's like to go through an inquest and it's very difficult but uh, you know, when I think back now, the, the coroner that there, who I, I don't remember his name because it was a long time ago, he was so lovely. I mean, I do remember that. He was very, very respectful, very caring. Um, he made a horrible situation. Uh, sorry, I'm so I'll get it. So this is why I don't really like to go into it in any detail on videos, only on my, that mem that I've got one video on the members channel where I try and tell the full story um, you know it's very distressing so but he made it as let's say as painless as it could be I mean you can't make it painless you can't you know these things that go to an inquest if, if he goes to an inquest there's a death involved one way or another so there's no you know there's no sort of sugar coating of it but they, in my experience with that particular coroner he did make it a lot easier for me um, and do you know I, I let me just say because um, I want to explain to you about you know if, if, if you've not I hope you haven't had experience with a coroner but I hope you never have to have experience with a coroner but if you ever do um, I looked up uh, this this advice this information that I'm giving you it comes from the Bere bereavement advice centre so, you know, I think that you would agree that that is a legitimate body, you know, um, anyway, just sometimes people, are, you know, uh, there's, anyway, no, I don't want to go into that. So, okay, so yeah, from the Bereavement Advice Centre, they were, you can look that up on the internet, but they say when is a, uh, an inquest needed? And it's whenever death is not from natural causes. So, you know, if there's not been a doctor visited recently or if um, there's no um, record of ill, you know, if the person's not suffering from a life-threatening illness, um, and it, then obviously an inquest is needed to establish the cause of death. So that's what the police said, wasn't it, at the time? You know, it's an unexplained death and it's going to the coroner. 
that is what we definitely know that is what they said and the inquest itself when it comes in June it is open to the public and it is open to journalists and I remember the inquest I attended uh, they, well I didn't realize there were journalists there but it did end up getting in you know it was in the local paper the case was in the local paper also my ex-partner his children by a previous relationship they were in the court as well so sorry yeah, yeah. so it was difficult so when I stood up to give my evidence I was also pregnant at the time um, about three months pregnant I think so it wasn't a nice experience by any means uh, so they are open to the public so when it comes to Nicholas I personally would not go inside in the, because if a, if, a, if a family there I mean surely you know you I know a lot of people are thinking of going to the inquest I, I don't know if I could do that certainly not go inside maybe be around or try and get uh, you know because we're all obviously we're, we're waiting with bated breath for the result of that inquest but um doesn't I, I don't know if I could actually go and sit in there I would feel like I was really being a ghoul then so no anyway so they're in quite but they are open to the public um a, a coroner cannot establish blame so although they'll come to a conclusion of the cause of death they're not permitted to determine blame uh, and the verdict will not identify someone as having criminal or civil liability so the inquest you know you won't go to the inquest and they'll say oh Paul did it or or even anybody did it they can't do that they do will just say uh, if if before you know from the investigations from before I suppose if they come to a conclusion it might be criminal they will pass it back to the police then to deal with they don't uh, deal with the criminal liability side of things just establishing the facts uh, so yes they can call witnesses and if they call witnesses they are that you are required by law to attend so you can't refuse to attend coroner's court you are required by law to attend if you are called you also can if you feel um, that somebody can give information pertinent to this case you can um, inform the coroner and the coroner will call this person as a witness not on the day you can't stand there on the day and say oh, I call such and such of this stand no you have to let the coroner know beforehand whatever information you might have that m makes you feel that this person might have pertinent information and should be um, challenged you know brought well it might not be uh, negative things it might be positive input but you've got to let the coroner know beforehand so the coroner can plan it you can't just declare that on the day once the day comes if you haven't declared that before it's it's not possible so yeah if you feel a particular person might help in the inquiry you can inform the coroner of that and in my experience the coroner uh, was an, uh, you know I suppose I I presume he was in touch with the rest of the family as well uh, he was you know very regularly telephoning me and telling me what would, was gonna happen and keeping me informed and reassuring me um, you know really the more I think about it, it was such a lovely man uh, you know but I suppose that's part of being a cor coroner you've got to be caring as well because you're trying although you've got to be detached and scientific and all those things that um, any medical professional has got to be but you've also got to be caring and mindful of the families so yeah uh, relatives can ask uh, are even allowed to ask questions of people in the coroner's court as long as it's been authorized by the coroner before again you can't stand up in a coroner's court and just say I want to question that person it's got to have been agreed with the coroner beforehand so there are various 
uh, conclusions or verdicts, if you like, that a coroner might come to. Natural causes, might be accident, unlawful or lawful killing. Um, so, you know, anyway, industrial disease is another possibility. So I suppose where there's been a case where somebody has died as a result of, that, of uh, some problem in the work environment. Or it could be an open verdict where um, there's insufficient evidence for any of the others. And at Nicholas' case is being dealt with, as I say, uh, there, there is um, a statement been released by Lancashire Council saying that it's been dealt with uh, with His Majesty's senior coroner for Lance and Blackpool with, uh, Blackburn with Darwin. And the Lancashire, Lancashire Constabulary, so they say in this statement that the Lancashire Constabulary has been asked by the coroner or ordered by the coroner really not to discuss this case in social media or mainstream media. So this explains this blackout. Uh, you know, we have heard nothing, have we, apart from that one thing uh, that we heard about the police returning to the river. as requested by the coroner so at the moment it's completely in the coroner's hand the coroner is pulling all the strings they say to the police even the police cannot just go out and start talking about this case uh, on the news you know the coroner has requested that nobody discuss it so it's probably very sensitive to the the um the the sort of appeal of this case if you like or the um the interest the public interest in this case and how huge it is so that'll be a reason for that i suppose um and it will be held at 10 a.m on the 26th of june 2023 that's when the the inquest will be held at the county hall fishergate preston and as I say, the coroner, whether he'll be there or not, I presume he will be, is the coroner in charge is James Adderley. And apparently he deals with 4,000 deaths a year. I mean, imagine that. I mean, 4,000. No, no wonder there's quite a long time before. You know, how do you fit all those inquests in and does he deal with all those himself i mean you obviously he must have a team you know uh, gosh four thousand deaths a year um you know it's an awful lot isn't it uh yeah so i think that's about all i want to say about the coroner but yeah i was intrigued that he's on this tv program cause of death it's called where he talks about different cases that he's dealt with and I'm definitely going to look out for that. I think that would be an interesting programme to watch. Uh, it would be like, you know, a true life sort of silent witness type um, programme. So we've not got long to wait now. If we've got to wait till, where are we, 26th of the 6th, whilst I'm making this video, well, it's still quite a long time. It is the 3rd of May as I'm making this video. We've got to wait till the 26th of June. Um, and then we have to just see what the resolution is. Will we get any answers? You know, I, I don't know what he's been able to establish so far. How she got in the river, was her death by drowning? Is although, you know, the uh, unfortunately she'd been in there for a while and so there will have been a lot of uh, decomposition but, um, you know, there's bones and things like that can't, you know, you can still uh, glean a lot from, even from, you know, skeletons that are found years later, you can still glean a lot for it, especially with the modern techniques that we've got now. And uh, uh, I would presume the first thing you do is you establish the cause of death, then you 
try and establish actually how it happened. You know, I presume that's the order it goes in because, you know, I'm not a coroner so I don't know, but that uh, that would make sense, wouldn't it? You establish the cause of death and then you look at the different p possibilities and decide which one is how it happened. So, with the evidence that you've got available to you. We still don't know all the evidence, etc. I don't know, you know, so I don't know if that's made public knowledge afterwards. Because in my particular case with the inquest that I was um, involved with, it was very clear what had happened. But there still had to be an inquest, you know, so it was, um, you know, as clear as anything what happened. There were notes left, etc. Um, you know, it's evident. But still has to be an inquest for any unexplained death, even though that one, I suppose you could think it was explained really. Uh, but yeah, they asked. I was asked a lot of questions. Um, I suppose it was just they had the, they knew what had happened, but they needed facts to support this. Um, yeah, so it's quite. I, that's you know I I don't know who'll be called as witnesses. Um, will the family be called to to sort of state about these problems that Nicola had, or will it be enough with medical records? Maybe, you know, we don't know. Maybe she did leave a note. If she did do it herself, did she leave a note? You know, we we don't know. We really, really don't know. And that's, uh, we can't help but speculate, but that is why we are speculating, because we actually don't know more than just that top bit of the iceberg that I've talked about earlier in another video. So any developments i will be back on here talking to you i hope you found this uh, video interesting and informative i think it is interesting to know a little bit uh, i do feel like she's in safe hands you know the guy uh, james adderley uh, you know that's how it feels i mean i know she's been released for burial now but that is how it felt to me that uh, the coroner didn't just treat uh, my ex-partner as just another case because although you know we had split up and what with all the stalking and all the problems etc and me being uh, and being frightened for my own life I still cared about him you know we'd been in a relationship I didn't want anything bad to happen to him and when it did it was you know it was those sort of things they do destroy you they do destroy you or they can destroy you if you let them um, and but the coroner just was so respectful towards it you know I always felt like he was looking after him you know that's how it felt he was I suppose they must go some training courses to be a coroner in the way of dealing with relatives etc he was very respectful to me he was very respectful in the way he talked about Terry uh, everything was um, you know I can't fault his behaviour at all uh okay so i'll see you very well i'll see you in the lives because i think what i'm going to uh, um we could do in the live stream uh for members on friday at seven european time to discuss these two videos so what i'm going to try and do is get out the video this video about the coroner and the video that i've done about the nicola bully effect and um, let me know how you feel. So what I'm thinking of is more shorter videos that have time to do more uh, rather than trying to do great big long videos because they take so long to put together. They're really, you know, it, uh, it takes so long to put them together it curtails other videos that I might want to make. So what do you think? Do you think, do you prefer shorter videos or longer videos? Let me know. Uh, so I'll see you real soon in the next video remember to always live and love very carefully oh and the other thing you might have noticed through this video sorry is I instead of doing all the housekeeping all together at the beginning I've done little bits here and there throughout it because I don't want to bore people every video I have to you know because that's part of uh, what I do you know selling books etc and um, uh, promoting the membership channel or talking about my Spanish classes um, but instead of doing one great big long chunk every video at the beginning 
I'm boring everyone before I even start. I've decided to put these little bits in, so I hope that's not interfered with your enjoyment of the video too much. So, live and love very carefully, and until I see you again, may your God go with you. Do you know some Spanish and you want to practice it in a fun way? <clears throat> I have three storybooks available for sale on Amazon. We have Princess Tia's Great Adventure or La Gran Aventura de la Princesa Tia. So it's bilingual, the stories in English and Spanish side by side so you can practice. So Princess Tia's Great Adventure. Or, Duque el Rey y Peter el Tonto se van de vacaciones. Uh, Duque the King and Silly Peter go on holiday. Again, a short story in Spanish and in English. And then one more, Rocky the Rebel, Rocky el Rebelde. Again, little short story just for fun with um, the English and Spanish side by side so that you can practice your Spanish or English if you're watching this and you're learning English. <coughs> All available on Amazon. Uh, Vicky Riley, Vicky with an I. Thank you. Hi, if you're interested, uh, if you're enjoying my videos and you'd like a little bit more, um, memberships are available and your membership um, will give you free live streams on uh, a Friday, uh, closed live streams I mean to say for members only every Friday at 7pm European time and also early access to videos, some extra videos, more personal videos are over there on my membership channel, um, those are just a few of the perks of being a member. But don't worry if you're a subscriber and you don't want to become a member, you'll still get lots of high quality content. Thank you.